In this episode, Mission shares his testimony and the role infidelity played in it. His wife cheated on him, they divorce, they reconciled by forgiving the Jesus way. He goes into talking about what it means to forgive the Jesus way and they got remarried. He talks two million YouTube streams for Thank You Lord and discusses the new barely finished two album with Brandon P. He also raps and breaks down Thank You Lord, Amen, Nowhere, and Seasons in the four song breakdown. Because we've told his testimony before, he's gonna do a quick Cliff Notes version of his testimony. I am Galika Brown, and this is Testimony, a musician's story. I always tell people there's really no short way to say it, but I'll try yeah. my hardest to shorten it. <laughs> so pretty much um, I was married at uh, 18. I got divorced five years later. And by the grace of God, uh, we got remarried. And we're going on, this is our third year of the new marriage in about, I think it's 12 years altogether. Something like that. Don't, don't quote me on that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so people were telling us we should just count all the years. So I just, just so people don't get confused. Like, how are you divorced? You were married 12 years. Yeah. So <laughs> we were remarried. This is, we're going on year three. And uh, we we're all together is about 10 years or something like that. 10, 12 years. Anyway, uh, you got, y'all get my drift. And uh, God just uh, really dealt with my heart, dealt with her heart on forgiveness on a, a Jesus level. The reason I say uh, on a Jesus level is because, um, the reason why the marriage was broken up was because of things that people, um, because of infidelity, I'll say that. And then, but we both were able to forgive on Jesus level and, you know, we were able to reconcile. Now that may not happen for everybody, but it was just fortunate enough that, um, uh, God saw fit to bring us back together in reconciliation. And, um, I've been doing music ever since I was consistently, ever since I was about 16, I'm a uh, 30 now. So, about 15, 16 years, um, and yeah, that's that's <laughs> it in a nutshell. If I go anywhere else, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to make I'm gonna have to make stuff make sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That was good. That was a good cliff notes. <laughs> Yo, so you're probably thinking, um, they switched clothes. What happened here? Well, as I mentioned earlier, mission was my first interview for 2020 after taking that high that hiatus. Now, if you haven't figured it out, I personally know Mission. We live in the same city, Sacramento, California. And this will be my third interview with him. So there are things that I know about him personally that I couldn't recall if we discussed on the podcast or not. So um, there was a session or a section where he he talked about something that I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into because I thought it could be beneficial to someone that is watching. And also, I wanted to let him get another stab at that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> he did a the thank you, Lord, Lord verse that he forgot. But shh, we won't we won't tell him that you know that he forgot the verse, and I'm letting him redo it again. All right. You were talking about your testimony. We did the Cliff Notes version of your testimony, and you mentioned that there was infidelity in your marriage, and. The more important part that I want to get into was the forgiving and the Jesus way. But right. before we get to that, if you can just kind of briefly explain, like, was the infidelity, it was your wife. Who yeah. Cheated you, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there was infidelity. Uh, she stepped out. Um, she stepped out in our marriage. I think it was like year four. And um, obviously there's no, um, you don't condone any of that, but um, just looking back on it, me being more mature, I understand like why, because I was, uh, my part in it was I was neglecting her. And uh, now that I'm older, I, I realize you don't neglect a woman. That's, that should never give them a reason why, but I yeah. understand. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. So um, yeah, I was um, at the studio all night, recording Christian music, but I was neglecting my wife. I was at the church all of the time serving, but I'm neglecting my wife. I'm not yeah. serving my wife. I'm not serving my family. And I think a lot of people, they justify them being gone because they're not out. Like I wasn't out cheating or I wasn't out with another girl. I wasn't out hanging out with my friends. I was doing what I thought uh, was right. Mm -hmm. But in that I was neglecting my wife and, you know, other than God, she's supposed to come, you know, next. And I think a lot of times Christians 
get it twisted. They think mm -hmm. that serving um, the church is um, serving God. It is serving God, but you can't not serve your wife and then serve at the church. That just doesn't mix. Yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. off balance and yeah. out of order. Way out of order. <laughs> <laughs> Way out of okay. order. So you guys were separated for how long then? Um, the total separation was about the separation plus divorce was about a year, maybe year and a half. And within that uh, year, there were other relationships. Yes. Um, in that, well, uh, uh, my mentor, he liked to say, um, well, he says that I cheated on her too because we were still married and I was in another relationship, but we were completely separated, like divorce papers going through. But the right thing to do was to wait until I had a di the official divorce before yeah. I jumped into another relationship. Um, and I totally agree with him. Um, so I guess it was infidelity on both sides. If you look at it like that, yeah. um, I, I, I don't advise people getting into relationships until they get a divorce because I ended up breaking someone's heart because like I wasn't even fully over, yeah. you know, um, my wife and then obviously we ended up getting back together and yeah. married and you know and all that type of stuff so um so i get yeah I, I i struggle with saying it but he was right there was infidelity on both sides i was like man we weren't together it was over it was we weren't seeing each other or nothing like that but um so yeah technically speaking but that wasn't the cause for the separation exactly Got it. Exactly. exactly and she too was in a relationship as well yes she um she was in a, a same sex relationship and um she had to get like delivered from that. But it was just um her experimenting because we got married so young mm -hmm. and like I, when we talk now, she was like, I just felt like I missed out on so much. And she was like, I was just trying and doing everything. Yeah. And then um and I judged her for a long time for that, but then you know, God just really dealt with me and was just like, man, like, don't ever say what you won't do. Yeah. And there's, and I don't look at nothing different. Like <laughs> I'm looking at everything the same. So you're, and that was a part of the, you know, I, I was such on a high horse. Mm -hmm. like, well, you did this to me. And yeah. um, I was at church, but you know what I'm saying? But God <laughs> was looking at it just like, bro, I told you to take care of her. I told you to take care of my child. I told you to leave, but you didn't do that. Yeah. So I'm looking at you just as like, I'm looking at her. So like, what is the, you know, I had to get knocked off my high horse. I had to get humbled in a lot of ways because just once again, we think we're doing something right and we think that we're doing it and we're leaning to our own understanding and our own way of doing things. When God is not even a part of it, and he's just like, all right, when you're done doing that, <laughs> <laughs> come over here so I can show you, you know, yeah. the right way. Yeah. And, but then that's, that's how it ties into the forgiveness because we're taught to forgive as like, yeah, we forgive you, but we don't rock with you no more. You yeah, know what I'm like, that's true. I forgive, but I don't forget. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When we talk, but when we talk about Jesus, he says, I forgive, and it's like you've done no wrong. And it's like you've not sinned at all. Right? That's hard. That's all. <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> that's, hard. <laughs> that's very hard. But, and I mean, but that's where I had to get to the place of, it's just like, yes, I forgive her. And in this case, it's like she's done no wrong, so we can come back into fellowship. You know what I'm saying? And Jesus forgives us, and he comes back into fellowship with us. And and I just want to encourage whoever watching this, like, there is some people that you forgave and you cut off that you, that if that person has changed their behavior, if that person has, you know, they're not doing the same thing, that person is worthy of your, your fellowship again. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not telling everybody to do that, but I'm yeah. there are those people that you do got to forgive and keep at a distance. But there are people that, that has changed. They're not the same and you're still holding them to that. And that's just not fair because that's, I mean, if we, we call ourselves a Christian, like God's not doing that to us. and Jesus isn't doing that to us. So there's some people that we need to forgive and, and let back in. Yeah. Preach. Facts. <laughs> But how did you get to that that level of Jesus forgiveness? Because I mean yeah. that's that's not something you can be like, okay, 
I forgive. Yeah. And then overnight, yeah. it's all good. I forgot yeah. and all of that. Exactly. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah. That that takes time. And that's stuff I still work on to this day. Because, like, if I'm being honest, like, there's thoughts that pop up in my head. Like, that's what the song Struggle was about. Yeah. Like, it pops up in your head. But it's just like, are you going to... Forgiveness is a choice every single day that you have to make. Love is a choice every single day that you have to make. It's not a feeling. Yeah. It's not necessarily going to go away. That's why the Bible tells us to renew our mind every day. It tells us to pray every day because God knows that these things are like, um, <laughs> somebody said something. It was like, man, um, I still got this urge and I still, you know, um, you know, and I've been fighting it so long, man, what do I do? Like keep fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give in to the yeah. urge. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, that's a, that sounds so simple, but that's like sometimes we make things so deep. It's just like continue to fight. Don't give up because as long as you're on this earth, you're going to have to continue. You're going to have urges. You're going to have uh, bad thoughts. You're going to have all these different types of things, but you don't give up the good fight. Yeah. You know? And that's that's how I would say do it. It's, it's something that you take one day at a time. That's not nothing that, you know, Time heals all wounds. I believe time, you just give things time. And there's months where I don't go without a single thought, but then a thought might creep up in my head. Then I got to pray that off and I got to yeah. keep fighting. Not because the thought came back. I'm like, okay, well, this is never going to go away. Yeah. Probably never won't. But the, but if I give in, then, you know what I'm saying? It just won't, <laughs> it won't ever go away. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, being in a relationship, committing yourself to another person as far as marriage goes is literally the hardest thing that oh, two individuals God. can do together. So, yeah. and it, it yeah. takes exactly what you're saying, like fighting yeah. every day. And it's yeah. not easy. It's not all, you yeah. know, butterflies and fluffy white clouds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, like even, even Nipsey Hussle said this, um, rest in peace, man. But he was like, you know, he's like, I, I can tell you guys that I did something special to get to where I was. And all he said was, I just didn't quit. And I think that's what a lot of mm. marriages, and it hurts me to see like marriages like, man, you know, we married 20 years and then we got divorced. I was like, man, you should have just kept going. Like, yeah. you know, I understand people get tired, but it's just like, if you just don't quit, if you just don't give in to your urges, and it's like some days you may, but it's just like, you don't fall off completely. You just keep yeah. going. That's the answer. Is it's continue to go. It's just like yeah. we weight loss. It's like the people <laughs> yeah. that see the results is the ones that don't quit. Like we all, like I'm struggling with that, but it's just like I give up, and that's yeah. why I don't see no results. <laughs> and if you don't give up, that that's when you don't. I mean, that's when you see the results when you don't give up. Wow. We can learn something from these second people. <laughs> you know, just don't. I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the the theme of life for all people right for all people you can't stop. and i think it applies <laughs> right diddy been saying it for years <laughs> yeah. okay. well thank you for sharing that part i mean i know that's going to be beneficial to someone as far right. as just loving the jesus way and, and not quitting it's a reminder that everybody can can use us in some aspect of their life mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, we are working on a book. I know I've been saying that, but we That's are working right. on that book. Yes. It's just taking us a long time to do it, but it will come out and we will be like pouring out. Yeah. Everything in depth, like what she's been through, like her mindset in certain places and my mindset, you know, so I can go deeper into it. So yeah. be able to look out for the book whenever. <laughs> I mean, because that's important, I feel like, especially within the Christian world, like everything that we talk about is so surfacy and, and fluffy. Yeah. Like, no one gets to the, the nitty gritty. And like, this is a story that no one, I haven't heard anything like this, like publicly spoken <clears throat> in the Christian world. And, but it happens like in yeah, all, all sectors time, of yeah. life, like everyone. Worse. So yeah. exactly. So um, it's, it's awesome that the two of you are willing to write about it and, and discuss yeah. about it. Um, I do think, I think it's interesting though, because I feel like as far as it seems like it would be easier to forgive the Jesus way in in your situation, as far as a guy being with, mm. um, a woman who was in a relation in the same sex relationship yeah. versus the other way. Like it might be right. a little bit harder for yeah, that'd be tough. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah, no, nah, that that is. That's what I'm saying. Hey, 
take it circumstance by circumstance. This ain't for everybody. Yeah. It would be, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, loving, forgiving the Jesus way ain't easy. And, it ain't. Right, it's not, yeah. That's why not everyone chooses that way. <laughs> Facts. Man. Okay. So you mentioned your pastor, and I know you have a close relationship with your pastor. Um, but you also said in the last episode, or the last time I talked to you, that um, you were going to church in Natomas. Did you switch yes. churches? Yes, I switched churches. I was at a Calvary. Literally, Calvary Christian Center was the only church I've ever attended and called myself a member. And um, I just got to a place to where um, I was stagnant and not going to church because some things didn't um I didn't necessarily agree with certain things that was going on nothing was bad it was just I wasn't on that same page in my life and I wasn't I felt like I wasn't growing so I just stopped going to church period okay, okay. so literally for I say at least a good year and a half I was not going to church I was going to like men's group and stuff every now okay. and again but I was kind of I was wishy-washy in that yeah and then um, I just sat uh, my wife down and I was like, you know what? Look, we need to get back in church because we just need to. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We're not going. Our kids aren't going. And um, Pastor Damien ended up leaving Calvary and um, and going to Real Life Church in the Thomas. Okay. And um, I've always considered Dame uh, my pastor because at my deepest, darkest moment, he pastored me through that. Yeah. And um. When he decided to leave, I thought, you know what? Maybe we should try his church. Let's just give it a try. Uh, wife, she wasn't necessarily with it at first because she was like, well, we do need to go back to church, but I don't want to just go there because Dame is going. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, I want to go there just because Dame is yeah. going. You know what I'm saying? I, I trust his judgment. If he's yeah. going to the church, it must be good. But um, I had to be understanding. I was like, you know what? You're right. So let's go and let's just try it out. We took the kids. And um in my mind, I was like, man, we we going here. I don't care what she said. But then I was like, nah, that's not right. So we went, and um, I was, like, looking at her to be, like, amazed, and she wasn't. So I got a little discouraged, and I was like, you know what? I'm just, God, I'm just putting it in your hand. So after that service, the kids came up to her. Oh, man, I love this church. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then ever since then, she's been hooked. On okay. the church, she was like, "Well, my kids love it." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And then, you know, she she became like, um, she became helping the youth do like these dances, and they ended up going to like nationals and winning okay. and stuff like that. So yeah. she was able to get involved. Yeah, where she was she was always in the background, like not really at church, or she, yeah. she would come and she would just kind of sit. But then in this church, she began to get involved and all that stuff. So that's how I knew I made the right decision yeah. to you know to get back in. And it was hard leaving Calvary, like having to tell Pastor Godot, like, hey, man, we're not going to go here no more. It was hard. Um, but I, I knew it was the right move for my family. Yeah. There's no love lost in Calvary. Like, I still visit every now and again. And, you know, those, like, you create family members there, you know. Yeah. Like Maya and all those cats. You know? They are your family. So, yeah. For sure. Man, you're okay. <laughs> you grow now. Like, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're grown, come a long way since dress rehearsal. Wow. You really are a day one. <laughs> you really are. No, I had the dress rehearsal CD from the album release party. <laughs> yes. You really are a day one. Yes. So that's why it's special to me that I get to talk to you in 2020, you know, when I bring the show back. Yeah. So that's dope. Yeah, that's, that's super dope. Okay, so we got the gist of your testimony, um, mm -hmm. the gist of your your story with your wife, and then how many kids do you guys have? Uh, four. Four, okay. Four and done, yeah. Four and done. I, know, I seem like every time we talk, it's another one added, <laughs> but this time it's no more. Okay, <laughs> okay. So when it's I talk no to so you we have five four. years from now, it's still going to be four. Possibly. Yes. <laughs> no, no possibility. <laughs> There's nothing. There's no more coming out of me or her. <laughs> okay. And you guys had a, a short lived <laughs> Jesus name. You had a um a short lived little family series, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was called Kingdom with the Smooth. So we still do uh like little things, but we haven't done a full episode since that one. It's just so hard to like 
get it to where it's not scripted and we don't want anything to be uh come off as is not authentic yeah. so we're still in the works of trying to figure out how to make that happen but like we do little things like we'll post videos of the kids doing something or like my daughter dancing or something like that and then we'll say kicking it with the smiths but yeah okay. hopefully one day when i get a little bit more uh bread in my pocket i can be able to fully get a full production going so how does that so were you coming into situations where it felt like it was scripted? Um, well, yeah, because we were like, okay, we're going to go to, we're going to go to the park. Right. And then my kids knew the cameras was there. Mm. So they weren't fully being their selves. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because when it's more natural, it's yeah. like stuff happens like super funny. Yeah. But then it was like, they were trying to do stuff that was funny and I was like, okay, yeah. that doesn't come off that right to me. <laughs> I mean, that is a hard position. I don't really know how people do it with reality TV, especially with kids, because yeah. you're like, oh, there's a camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. But, I, but I think it is scripted. Like, yeah. when it comes, so it's, like, it's scripted. There's yeah. like, okay, we need you guys to, you know, so I don't want to come off like that. Yeah. But I'm, I'm still trying to figure out a way to, to get it done. Okay. And so we had that, and music-wise, now you have all of me, none of you music group. All okay. of you, none of me music group. A O Y N O N. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> it's not about me. It's not about you. It's, right, it's right, right. Yes. Exactly. So Thanks when you get it person. twisted, just say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of you, none of me. And, and, so the, the more simple way to say it, well, some people say it's not simple. It's A O Y N O M M G. And um, that came about, you know, just. For me, saying all of you, none of me before my track. Um, and then, you know, once I uh, decided to step away from RPSMG, I knew that I wanted to start my own label and I wanted to start my own uh, group. So God gave me the vision to do it. And then um, he put the people around me and we ran with it. And now we got two artists right now, Mark Stevens and uh, Zay. Zay's from the Fairfield area. Well, San Francisco, Fairfield area. And uh, Mark is from San Jose, but he stays in Sacramento. And uh, two dope artists that I'm looking to just, you know, continue to build with and connect with. And, you know, hopefully they can get, you know, more recognition, even more recognition, you know, as, as the label grows. So, Sweet. yeah, something right. we're excited about. So you like, you're always associated with acronyms, basically. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's heck of funny, even on the album. Oh, every album, I think, has an acronym. And even on this new one with me and Brandon, there's an acronym on it. Okay. So, <laughs> voila. There you go. <laughs> so, for those who don't know, yes, you are with RPSMG. And yeah. um, the latter years, it was really just you and Brandon towards the end, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, it was just me and Brandon. Uh, and, Kenny doing production. And what was the decision to stray away from that and do your acronym? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to um I, I wanted to be able to build something that I could call my own. Mm -hmm. Um RPSMG was more of uh Brandon's and um and like and obviously we still work together. And there were some behind the scenes issues that we hadn't worked out that um caused me to uh step away until we worked it out. Um but I didn't want to step away and come back. Like I wanted to step away and come with something. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wanted to have something that I can call my own. Um, and I just think it was that time because it was just me and Brandon. And I wasn't signed under him. And you know what I'm saying? It was kind of his label and his thing. I was like, well, I can start my own. And, you know, we, we're still going to rock together like we're doing Barely Finished 2. So that, that was the decision, you know, just kind of thinking long term and something that I can leave for my, you know, for my uh, kids and family. So what's the difference now between just being an artist and now basically a label head, right? Yes. It's, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know what I got myself into. I text uh, Trey Murray and I was like, why did you let me do this? <laughs> <laughs> why did you let me? But no, um, I love it, but um, it, it has its challenges because, you know, you're dealing with personalities of artists. You're, now it's not just me I'm responsible for. It's two other artists um, that I'm responsible for in their careers that they're trusting me with. And, you know, they do a lot of stuff on their own. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I still want to see them get other to, to higher heights. Yeah. And it's just, um, 
it's really it's just it's it's more on my plate. But you know, I'm built for it. I um I believe God called me to do it, so I'm loving it. And what was it about Mark? Or is it Mark or Mark? Mark Stevens, yeah. Mark Stevens and Zay. What was it about them? Like, let's do individually. Start with Mark. What did you first see about Mark? Where you were like, I gotta sign him. Yeah, Mark was um Mark is actually the co-founder with me. Okay. So he um Mark, me and Mark knew each other through just through the years, and he's always had this like he's super like um, ambitious. He knows how to hustle. He's good with admin he's good with um making stuff happen and that that was drawn to that before i was drawn to the to the music and when i first told him about it he was like yeah and he was just kind of helping me out just because he wanted he just loved what we were doing and i was like hey bro you should come on and you know work a little closer with me and it was like we could start putting out your music and stuff as well because he was putting it out but he wasn't taking it as serious mm-hmm. towards the tail end he were, he was kind of taking it serious before we decided to partner up and then uh, once I seen that, I was like, man, let's let's do it. And, you know, he helped me get a lot of stuff on the business side um, intact. And um, once he started putting out his music and started going, he started going crazy. So I was like, bro, you actually super dope. Like, because at yeah. first he was, I, I wasn't the huge fan of him. He yeah. knows that. But as he got on, like his talent, and I'm just like, bro, you actually are really dope. <laughs> you clever, you catchy. Um and with Zay, man, I just always um, liked Zay as a person. Um, he used to come to my shows back in the day with Justin, and you know, he just showed up. He was just he was just there to support. There was no no anything, mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. he was just there to support. And then um, I heard him rap before. I was like, this dude actually got bars, but I never knew that he was serious about it. And actually, he helped me write a hook on um, "All You None of Me," the one with Derek Minor. Okay, he actually wrote that hook. Um, and that's when I was like, oh, this dude actually got some talent. And then um, he put out his album. Um, it's called Manifest. And I listened, it was an EP. And I was like, man, this dude is actually dope. So me and Mark got together. And um, I had already always liked Zay. And we got together. And it just fit. We prayed on it. And we was like, you know, he's just the right fit. And he just put out a single. Dude is just dope. He's okay. just dope. Yeah, he's just a real rapper. You know, cats going to have to um, respect his pen game. So... I know whatever plans anybody had for 2020 is slightly altered. (laughs) Oh, my Lord. (laughs) 2020 is trash right now. (laughs) So, well, let's let's first say, let's talk about how has the pandemic affected you as an artist and label head? Man, it it affected me um, drastically. Um, I was posted, I was on my first, what I would consider my first big tour. With propaganda and Derek Minor. Oh yeah. Oh, that's was, right. Cause okay. <laughs> I think it was two weeks before. Yes. yes. There it's was like, like notification. Sorry, this concert was, canceled. <laughs> so that 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 hurt. Yeah. That hurt a little bit. That stung. <laughs> I was like, why? <sighs> but I couldn't even, you know, I couldn't even be mad because you know, the worst things that happened to people. People have lost their lives you know, people has had world tours canceled. So I just kept in the hindsight. I said, God, you know, we're going to have to work it out um, and just go for, go from here. And even with the label, like um, after this, I have a meeting uh, with them and we're, we're trying to figure out how can we be more present online. Um, so we're just having to shift some things mm-hmm. and <clears throat> nobody can feel sorry for themselves because it's just like, Hey, everybody's going through it. So it's either you're going to, you know, you're going to drown, you're going to sink or swim, you know, yeah. you got to figure out something. So we can't pout over it too long. Like I said, I was hurt. I was mad, but it's like, all right, got to pull up your britches, yeah. you know, and, and get on, get, get on with it. So was this, um, just the West coast tour you were going to be a part of or was it? Yes. The- okay. Yeah. So originally they were going to put me on the, the, the West coast. And then after that, we're going to talk if we're going to do more yeah. or not. So okay. I'm and pretty then, sure I was going to try to do the whole thing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any plans um, at all that are kind of solid for the end of the year? Um, we don't have anything solid. We're trying to come up with a game plan for uh, after this thing lifts, but it's kind of hard because nobody knows when. Yeah. I know they're saying May, but I'm not going out until yeah. – if they say, if they say it go, it's off May 1st, I probably won't go out until like the end of May. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, that just wouldn't be wise. Yeah, uh, 
Got but we're, we're strategizing and planning and seeing exactly what we can do. I know we're going to do some things where we can be more present online. We did an online concert. Um, oh, wow. It was pretty good. Um, we're, we're thinking about doing another one, but we got to take it to the next level. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're trying, excuse me, we're trying to get some things in place. All right. And let's then talk about, I don't know if you <laughs> read the entire email, but um, yes. I have a, a section now called the four song breakdown, which yep. is basically the artists either rapping or reciting a verse from a particular song and then breaking down the song. So, so um, I had the songs that I want to go over with you are Thank You, Lord, um, Amen, Nowhere, and Seasons. So let's get into that Thank You, Lord verse. That's, um, <laughs> this is your first time rapping right. it. <laughs> I'm sure you have all the lyrics memorized. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> all right, so look, it, uh, School of Hard Knocks took the crash course. Uh, he was on a mission, bring the task force. Hey, hating cause we went in your bad sport. Riding through the city, got the Bible on the dashboard. Hey, look, pocket song empty, but I'm breathing no. Yeah, counting up the blessings, I got plenty more. Look, Tony slingshot, watch him make it go. Yeah, got it all locked, but he opened door. Hey, man, they so ungrateful, I'm not feeling them. Yeah, he the reason that we still living here. Yeah, could have got lost, but he sent for them. Hey, I'm going to thank the Lord when I'm watching in. Yeah, wake up in the morning, got to thank the Lord. <laughs> Y'all know that. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. It was nice hearing that for the first time. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Thank You, Lord, the song that has over 2 million views on YouTube. Yes. That I don't remember. <laughs> <Rose>. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else can probably recite it for you. Yeah, yeah, y'all get it. Y'all got it. <laughs> oh, um, it's so that it's song. Title track. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that song is um, was literally I had no beat anything to it. It just came to me. I spit the bars. I spit the the hook and a voice memo, and I sent it to Brandon. And the rest is literally history. And then, and then in, in the song, I was just like telling people to be thankful no matter what. And that, it kind of stemmed from, from my album, Thank You, Lord, We Made It Safe, because um, my grandma just pumped gratefulness in me as a kid. And as a kid, I didn't understand it. But um, now it's coming out as um, now that I'm older and I'm seeing like, man, just like even in this pandemic, like, yeah, we're in a pandemic, but some people lost their lives in this pandemic. Like, and we're still here able to do this interview, you know, and, and you know, and things like that. So just like, man, be grateful for the little things like waking up, breathing, mm. you know what I'm saying? And um, so that's what that song comes from. That's why throughout the whole song, I'm just like, um, I'm just, I'm just giving thanks, you know, to God, just like, thank you for, oh, you still breathing. Got to thank the Lord, you know, just, mm -hmm. it's kind of self-explanatory and, and the lyrics, I wanted to keep them simple so that anybody could recite it and anybody could say it. Except and it was something you. that was... <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> mm -hmm. Man, and you know what's funny? I just did that song at the and didn't mess up. And I never forget my lyrics. I just hope these next ones. Oh, my God. It's all good. Man. Yeah. And what about the decision to have V-Rose on it? That was a game time decision. Okay. Because I knew the song was going to be dope. I knew the song was going to be dope. But I was like, it's missing something. And then I was like, I don't know why it just said b rolls popped in my head. And I hit her. I sent her the track. She said she loved it. She murdered the verse. Yeah, she Like, destroyed it. And, you know, we had, we had did a song back on this album I had before Just Hers. It was called Main Event. And I was like, B, we got to do it again. Like, we got to do something dope. And she was just with it. She's always down to help. Uh, she's on um, the, the song, that, the other song that she, you were saying, um, the last one on the album. Oh, Nowhere. Nowhere. She's on Nowhere yeah. as well. Yeah. She murdered that as well. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, if anyone hasn't heard, uh, thank you, Lord, we made it safe. I did an album review on it. Like, I yeah. really love that album. Like, that was one of my favorite albums of last year. Like, wow. this period. No. It's, I mean, you know, I've been rocking with you since dress rehearsal, and I thought you were dope then. Sure. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> but to, to see Stuff just up your a growth, bit. <laughs> yeah, your growth and just, like, it all come together. Like, that album was just an accumulation of, like, all the hard work, like, every skill you've learned, just everything just came together right. to, like, in perfect harmony. It was... Yeah. It was such, I was like one of those things where it's like, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, since you men- mentioned Nowhere's Anyway, can you do a verse from that one? Do you remember anything? Yeah, I hope so. I think it, so it's uh, going around in circles, trying to find your way. I've been seeing clouds way too long. I need a brighter day. Long as I'm walking with the king, I'll be walking straight. Yeah, said I've been searching and I've been looking. I gotta find you. Keep on pushing. Please don't let up. Keep pursuing. Be almost there. Just keep going. Yeah. Yes. And I can't sing the part. I know. <laughs> I'm not gonna even. I wanted to like no way, but no. <laughs> no. I'm gonna try to no. Not me, Rose. Not gonna mess up the song. No. Like <laughs> Blake is on that as well. Blake is a freaking beast of a, a singer, male vocalist. Okay. Um, that song, literally, um, I like. That was the one I got chills because it's just like when you feel like alone, when you feel like you know God is not listening, you feel like God's not answering your prayers, and it's like you want to like walk away, and you want to you know just kind of do your own thing. And some people often it's like, man, I I've, I've went away from God. Am I going to be able to get back? And it's just like a reminder, it's like there's nowhere that you can go to where he can't get you. There's no, there's nowhere you can hide. Like he, he'll find you, you know what I'm saying? If you allow him to, you know, if you allow him to. And um, I think that song, man, is, is definitely, I should just need to push that a little more because I think it could, uh, it can help <laughs> people. Yeah. If they just listen to it. Yeah. Especially, yeah. I mean, at all times, but even like now during this, this pandemic era, it just musically as well that song like the way it comes together it is just like you have like your parts where it's just straight worship where you just want to fill your hands yep. yep and that's my favorite like if i can be just banging just banging my head yeah. and then going from that to hands yeah. up yeah. it's like oh this it has yeah. everything that i need in one song so yeah, that that's that's one of my favorite uh, songs I've ever like been a part of or created because it it gives you that it's just like man, and then you go into worship because that's like my life, you know what I'm saying? It's just like I'll be hardcore for one second, and then I'm just this little big teddy bear, you know, that just that fears God and just you know that wants God's love and that wants to show God's love, you know. So I, I, that's one of my favorite songs. Period. Yeah. It's a perfect way to end the album, for sure. Yep. <laughs> okay, and then Amen. I mean, that's a banger right there. That's like a club yeah. banger. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, do I know that verse? <laughs> Look, don't judge me, people. Like, I've been making so much music. I haven't been on the road performing. I do not listen to my songs over and over. But I should know them. I know them, but I don't know them. Not the old stuff. But let me see if I know this verse. Uh, 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 uh. They say they was for us. They was jawsing. Yeah, I'm hungry, but you will not catch me starving. Uh, see them blessings in my way. Yeah, Tarzan. Uh, if I ever do it, best believe I go the hardest. I'm not with that weakness, boy. I'm trying to go the hardest. Touch my kids, that'll get you drugged like a pharmacist. Ain't no choices here. I do my job, yeah, regardless. Yeah, I don't walk away. I keep on marching. Since I got the light, I might as well give it to the darkest. Trust me, they can't see me. They can't see me like a starfish. Talking with the wicked just to find they got a solvent. 
farming, serving husband, father, plus an artist, all up in that order. If I miss it, life could tarnish. I'm not on a way, man. They can't see me like a starfish. I've been on that mission, on that mission to the garden. Hey, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mixed up some words but trying to get it's trick. all good that song gets you hyped though you you get the juice yeah. to get you hyped yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh man that song is like just lines in there where I'm just like I, you feel the beat and I'm just like touch my kids like because that's that bear side of me yes. that I'm just be like but I'm just like I'm on a mission trying to get back to I the love garden that, though get drunk like saying. a pharmacist pharmacist yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I be talking crazy sometimes, <laughs> but it's just, but that song, man, it had like a, a 300, it made me feel like I was a part of the Spartans. Mm. You know, you ever seen the movie 300? Yeah. Like, it just had that that vibe to it, and it's just like saying amen, it's just like, yes, amen, this is, yes and amen, this is like, this is what we know, you know, and like, it's like God is approving all of this, mm-hmm. right now. like, let's let's go, you know, so that, that song definitely gets me hyped, produced by K.A.G., one of the most underrated producers for in, sure. of all time. For sure. Of all time. He made Nowhere. He made, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because he'll make that and then he'll make Nowhere. <laughs> and then he'll make Struggle. And then I'm just like, this dude is just, no. he's so versatile, but he's, he's, he's so, Yeah. A lot of talented people, um, not only in CHH, but in Sacktown. <laughs> Period. Yeah. Sacktown got so much talent. And it's just, <laughs> Seven, V Rose, Spec, me, Brandon, Justin. Like, there's just yeah, so many people out here, and it's just like, why aren't we taking over? Right? Yeah, maybe one day, we'll see. <laughs> All right, so here's a newer song. You yeah, should be, like, able to- <laughs> I should be able to recite this. No, I know this verse. Okay, you and Brandon with seasons. Yeah, yeah. So I said, uh. OG told me don't be flexing, spending all your bread. I'm a giver, I ain't taking, but I took a chance. Underrated at this point, but we keep going in. Look, started off with no shows, now we flew it in. Top C, top flame, I ain't never hot lane. I was so focused on the job, then I got paid. Seek first the king, then the thing you can obtain. Worry about the team, we don't even speak a op name. Even when it dropped, I was going through a lot. Could have took a different route, so I'm proud of what I'm not. Got my back against the wall, man, I probably could have stopped. It's some folks depending on me, now nah, I got to get this guap, hey. Going low, yeah. They just blowing smoke. I ain't even trying to hear you talk about so and so. It was vacant with the vision. That's a subject I won't mention. Went to God just to listen. Now I'm back with a vision. Hey, mission. Hey, <laughs> I know yes. my newer stuff. Yes. I'm, I'm glad you know the newer stuff. stuff. Okay. That um, makes up for the rest. <laughs> right. <laughs> nah, so um, Caesars, man, me and Brandon, like, even though, like, if you listen to what I know for me, in my verse, like, I was saying a lot of stuff that was, like, kind of heavy, but I just made it sound swaggy. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, uh, even when it dropped, I was going through a lot, could have took a different route, so I'm proud of what I'm not. Um, I'm saying, like, like y'all listening to this song, but y'all don't even know what I'm going through. Like, mm. I could have, like, just going through some personal things with RPSMG, going through some personal things with AOI and OM in my life, period. You know what I'm saying? But I could have chose to to fall off. I could have chose any of that, but I'm proud that I didn't do that. You know what I'm okay. saying? And then I was like, uh, some people was vacant with it. I said they was vacant with the vision. Went to God just to listen. Now I'm back with a vision. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, even though people have left or things didn't go the way that I went to, I still chose to go and listen to God. And then now it's like, okay, now I'm back. I'm, I'm refocused. My mind is renewed. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I said so many things that probably went over people's head that they weren't even like, even and, and it's fine, it's okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, I never try to waste verses. Like even though that like that's a super banger, swaggy song, and it's just like you just nodding your head. The beat is so dope. I could have said anything. Yeah. But I try not. To, <laughs> I try not to get on there and waste bars. Um, but I was talking about a lot in that song, and it was just like even like and we call it seasons because it's just like man, like the seasons change. But we're not changing. We stand the same. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like seasons. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go through stuff. But how are you going to waver? Like, are you going to waver or are you going to, you know, stand firm? And I think that's what we were saying, you know. 
Okay. Do that song. Now, did Brandon do that beat? No, that uh, uh, Rick and Thaddeus. Okay, don't know who's yeah. is that a person or a group? Did you say that's Rick a group? Thaddeus? That's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's that uh, Rick and Thaddeus on the beat. Okay, and <laughs> and oh, uh, fun fact: we sampled okay. Zay's uh, song from Manifest. Okay. At the beginning, show me a bit of Jesus. I got a women. So that's Zay's song that we sampled. Okay. Um. Yeah, we just thought that part was just so dope. We was like, hey, let's sample that and put it at the beginning of the song. Sweet. That's cool when yeah. you can sample yeah. your own artist stuff. <laughs> 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 and uh, barely finished too. When's that drop in? Um. I don't. May eighth. Prayerfully. Okay. We were supposed to drop the pre-orders this Friday. But they got pushed back to Wednesday, so we're just hoping there's no more pushbacks okay. because um, we're going through uh, RMG Amplified to uh, mm -hmm. release it, so it's a bigger deal. And um, you work with RMG Amplified on, like, yes, exclusively yourself as well, right? Yep, yep. Okay, Brandon, Brandon as well. So, okay. Uh, some things have changed <laughs> since the last time we talked. <laughs> we got a little, a little distribution going, so our music is reaching a little more people. Um, shout out to RMG Amplified, Doc Watson, and uh, Derek Minor, man. They're doing a good job with our stuff. So um, let's talk so. about that. How how has that changed um, this the process being signed with Amplified, RMG Amplified? Man, I've been I was able to go full time once I was a uh, once okay. I signed with them, Sweet. and um, I get a check every month because of streaming numbers. They help get my streaming, okay. help get me in front of more people. Um, so it's changed drastically for me and I'm able to focus on what I need to focus on now. Um, and I just, awesome. I just love it. What? Yeah. I love it. That is, yeah. a, oh my gosh, that's incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's dope. So I, I got hit during the pandemic, but since streaming didn't go away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, ah, exactly. Every month. Yeah. So we're getting creative, but you know, streaming is, uh, people hate it on streaming, but streaming is the best thing right now. At least for yeah. me, I know it works for me. Okay. And the album, why did you guys decide to do part two? I, it it, it would it didn't feel right not to. Okay. <laughs> it was just like we just like man, we gotta do barely finished two, and it may be three, four, five. We don't know, but we 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 decided. Me and Brandon sat down, and we was like, bro, you know, everything else aside, we make great music together, and let's not rob the people of that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, let's continue to give them good music until. They don't want it no more. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, we're going to continue to make music together, you okay. know, n whether we're on the same label or not. You know what I'm saying? We're going to continue to make music together. And then I was hitting at it for a while. And he was like, bro, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> so once he said that and we got it working, we got to work in. It took us a couple, like, songs to get our, you know, chemistry back. Yeah. But then by, like, that third, fourth song, we threw those away and we was rolling. We just making songs, making songs, right. making songs. <laughs> So you gonna do so like, we had to do it. We felt like the people wanted it. Like Tyler Perry yeah. and Medea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Medea ain't Until going nowhere. Until y'all say no more. <laughs> Until y'all say no more. All right. And then you teased on Instagram, and then you just mentioned it earlier that you're working on solo work. Yes. Okay. Yes. I can. I. That's why I can't remember nothing because there's so much more. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to make up for that. But no, um, definitely working on some new stuff. Um, I can't wait to drop that. That's why I'm like, all right, let's drop Barely Finished so I can get this new stuff out. Uh, I'm just experimenting, trying new things, trying to sing a little more um, okay. when it's necessary. I'm not trying to force yeah. it. Like, I'm not going to be a singer or anything like that. But um, I, I just dropped the snippet and it seemed like people liked it. So Yeah, I heard the I snippet, like, you singing. Yeah. It sounded like a little uh, yeah. rowdy rich. Hood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded uh, good, though. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to the new stuff. I got some stuff dropping. Um, hopefully, like, right after. Not right after, but, you know. So are you still working on it, or is it done and you're just ready? To that, song, that song is done. Um, I got, like, four or five songs done. Okay. Um, but I'm still working. I'm still working. I probably won't. I'm not going to rush nothing. Okay. But um, I'm still working. I'm still working. And is there anything else that you want to plug right now or talk about? Yeah, man, just um, barely finished too. We just talked about that. That's dropping. Make sure y'all get that. Um, um, Zay and Mark are dope artists. Don't just take my word for it. Go see it yourself. 
Um, Mark just dropped the two singles within the last two months situation and step out. He's going to drop another single May 1st. Okay. Um, it's called Yeah Right. Zay just dropped a single called um, Way Up. Yeah, I think Way Up. Don't quote me on that. But he just <laughs> dropped a new single. Um, and yeah, man, just look out for new artists. It, like El Dewan's a dope artist. TJ is a dope artist. Um, Scooty Wop is a dope artist. Like, they're not even a part of my camp, but those are just some young guys. Uh, Big Breeze, dope artist. CJ King, you know, just plug those guys, man. Just if y'all oh. haven't heard of them, go check their music out. They're okay. super dope. If you, I might need you to have you connect me with some of them so I can tell their testimony. Definitely. Okay. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And I might need your assistance with Brandon, too. I haven't even tried to reach out to Brandon because I know how he is. It's going to be hard. <laughs> I will call him after I get off the phone. I have a hard time. Now I don't know more because I'm <laughs> chastising him a couple times. <laughs> All right. So um, I guess final thoughts. We're in the middle of this pandemic. Um, I don't know are you, how, how your church is doing things. Are you guys doing, like, yeah. online services? Like, how are you staying connected to the yeah. church, to the word, just to God yeah. during, this, during this time? Definitely a lot of, um, like, uh, since we do our, shout out to my wife, because this is her idea, like, before um, school with the kids, do, like, a morning prayer. Um, our church is definitely doing stuff online that we can catch any time, private prayer time, private Bible studies, and, you know, and things like that. Um, staying rooted, you know. I had just got back into going to church, like as far as serving. So that, that was a little bit of a bummer for me because I was enjoying it so much, but now it's just like, okay, how can I serve um, the people without actually being in a building? Yeah. And that's something that, you know, we're, we're working out and figuring out. But like I said, a real life church is in the Thomas, but they're streaming online every Wednesday and Sunday, regular services. And, you know, just standing it like that, man. And just making sure that, this is we're not in a building, you know, we're still being the church, which is, it's just a building anyway. Yeah. So now we actually got to be a church. Yeah. <laughs> it's ironic. Yeah. That is, that is true. That is true. All right. Well, on those words, um, it was nice catching up with you. Definitely. Always. And looking forward to barely finish two and the solo stuff. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> Make sure you let me know what you think of uh, barely finish two. <laughs> 